Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Code Ray, and if you're new, I'm currently an incoming software engineer at a fan company, and on this channel, I help you to navigate and succeed in your tech career. So for today's video, we're going to talk with a current Amazon software engineer about tips and tricks for you to help pass your Amazon internship interview or any other current technical interview that you're having. So some of the things that we'll be going over in this video include what the Amazon internship interview process was like, um, how to tackle the technical portion of the Amazon internship interview, and what his experience as an Amazon intern was like. So let's get started. Okay, so can you start off by giving a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Jack. Uh, I graduated university about a year ago. Uh, I've been working uh, at Amazon full-time for about a year now, and in school, I did a couple of tech internships, uh, one at Amazon, one at SAP in Vancouver. Um, and yeah, so I have some experience when it comes to applying for internships. Awesome. So can you start off by telling us, because um, you currently work at Amazon, and I know you did an Amazon internship before, um, and can you tell us about um, your whole recruiting process onto that Amazon internship? and uh, what that process was like. Yeah, for sure. So the Amazon internship, uh, that happened in about third year for me. Um, and, you know, during that time, I was just trying to get an internship in the States. Because mm -hmm. previously, I've only worked at SAP in Canada. Mm -hmm. But um, internships, tech internships in the US at least, tend to pay <laughs> a lot better than the ones in Canada. Um, and then you factor in the USD conversion and it's, it's a no-brainer, right? And typically a lot of these bigger companies have, you know, really cool perks for full-time and interns and they do a really good job of trying to make sure the interns are not only enjoying themselves but getting the right kind of mentorship and uh, the learning experience that will make them want to come back to the company. Um, so I can start off with the interview pro or how I landed the interview, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, personally, I just happened to apply on their website and they reached out back to me with, uh, you know, my availabilities and they sent me the first round and I went from there. But I strongly advise anybody out there that's looking for any, a job at Amazon or anywhere else to just use as many different avenues as possible. So that includes obviously like applying directly on the website, um, going to career fairs at your school if, if you have them going to hackathons because a lot of times uh, these bigger tech companies will sponsor hackathons and have recruiters at the events mm -hmm. um, or even DM recruiters on LinkedIn, you know? Um, and obviously if you have a friend that works there, referrals are an amazing way to get your foot in the door. So use any possible outlet because you really just want to advertise yourself, right? Give yourself as much chance as possible to be noticed and to be selected for an interview and so on. So what on your resume helped you to stand out in order to get that interview back from Amazon? Yeah, so I actually did apply to Amazon and a couple other places in the States the year before, uh, before I did my SAP internship, and I didn't get any callbacks or interviews. Mm -hmm. And I think a big reason for that was I had no technical experience on my resume, right? Mm -hmm. uh, back then, I didn't do any internships, so I only had uh, random personal projects and hackathon projects on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, which are definitely not bad to have. Like, if you don't have any technical experience, that's what you should be putting on your resume. Mm -hmm. Anything to kind of demonstrate that you have some technical ability, essentially, right? If you have a good grade in uh, mm -hmm. computer science specific classes, put that on there, right? Um, until you have some solid internship or relevant work experience, you just want to fill it up with whatever you can, mm -hmm. right? So by the time I, you know, I got the uh, got the Amazon interview, uh, I had an eight months of experience at SAP, which I was able to put on my resume. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the main difference maker. So um, if you already have experience, it's much easier to get your foot in the door for these other companies. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of snowballs from there, right? The more experience you have, the easier it is to land your next interview. I think the hard part is definitely getting that first internship, mm -hmm. which is why I do recommend putting you know, as many personal projects or research or anything from school that will be relevant because most likely that's, that's all you have to be known. Okay, so can you tell us about the initial interview and the Amazon process once you got it? Yeah, so once they reached out to me, uh, they sent me this thing called an OA, which is an online assessment. Mm -hmm. And I had a week from when they sent the email to complete it. So they had a deadline and uh, it'll tell you stuff like once you open it, uh, you have to finish it to completion. You have 
a set amount of time. I think it was an hour and a half to do it. And that assessment, I don't know how in detail I can talk about it, but it wasn't very coding related. Uh, it was more almost like an IQ test. They'd ask you um, stuff like, you know, given a sequence of numbers or letters, what the next one would be. So I think it was to test more your critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So that one um, is a little hard to specifically prep for, but I'm pretty sure most people end up passing that one. Um, I think it's more of a filter to get rid of, I don't know, the really bad candidates. So after I passed the first one, uh, it was also about a week before they replied to me telling me I moved on mm -hmm. and they sent me a second assessment. This mm -hmm. time, pretty much same restrictions. You had a week to open it, uh, timed an hour and a half. And this one was strictly technical questions. So definitely you can prepare for this one by uh, studying lead code or cracking the coding interview. Mm. Um, so yeah, this, this one was obviously a lot harder. And um, I'll be honest, I, I thought it was like 50-50 whether I would move on from that one. Mm. But fortunately I did. Mm. And once I did, they, they told me uh, there was one round left. It was a virtual interview with uh, another dev who works at Amazon. Mm -hmm. And that one, I want to say it was also about an hour to two hours. Um, and also again, strictly coding questions, maybe a couple of behavior depending on your interviewer. But usually, uh, in my experience, they jump straight into the coding questions. And once I passed that one, I got the offer uh, in a few days after that. So the whole process took about maybe a month to a month and a half with all the time in between. How did you approach the technical portion of the Amazon interview? Basically, I would say the best thing, the most important thing that you can do when it comes to these technical uh, in-person or one-on-one -on -one interviews with another person is to talk out loud and communicate everything that you're thinking about. Because for the interviewer, they're just trying to get as much data on how you approach problem solving as they can, right? And they can't do that if you're just being silent, thinking about everything. And if you start coding, it might make sense in your head, but you know, for the interviewer, they, they're lacking the context that you built up. So it's important to verbalize your thought process right from the beginning, uh, you know, state the problems, state the missing pieces, uh, state what you think will be the best approach to do it. Um, so that, that's one basic thing to keep in mind throughout the interview process. So once you actually get the interview question, um, you're going to want to take some time to think about it. It's okay in this part to be quiet because you don't want to start off by saying the wrong thing, right? Mm -hmm. So take a few moments to really understand the problem, uh, you know, find out the requirements, the missing pieces. And when you're ready, you can begin talking to the interviewer saying, oh, you know, I think I want to approach it using this or using this solution and always give you a reason why, right? The first thing that you do is you don't want to try to get an optimal solution. You mm -hmm. just want to get a solution, mm -hmm. right? So the easiest solution to a lot of these algorithm questions are just the brute force, you know, like nested list if you have to, um, some, some exhaustive search, anything to show that you can get a solution. Mm -hmm. And then once you have a working solution, uh, you're going to want to run some test cases through it. Mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, it's actually working the way you intended. And this will allow the interviewer to see how you walk through code in general, which is a huge important part of uh, computer science and problem solving, right? So uh, go through some test examples with your solution algorithm, make sure that there's no bugs. If there are, you know, that, that's fine because that's what the testing part is intended for, right? Don't freak out, just fix it and move on. Mm -hmm. um, so once that's done and you know you have a working solution, you want to iterate on it and improve it, right? So you want to talk about the space complexity and the time complexity of any time that you get a solution. You want to quickly talk about the space and time complexity and the trade-offs uh, between them. Mm. And then you want to talk about how I can improve this, how I can make this faster, or how I can make this more space efficient. You know, sometimes the interviewer will try to lead you that way themselves by saying, oh, what if you had uh, to conserve as much memory as possible, right? They want to see how you can solve the problem using different constraints. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you may be working on the same problems for the entire interview, and that's perfectly fine, right? As long as you're uh, demonstrating that you recognize the different kind of constraints that they may throw at you, and they can see how you work through that to come up with different solutions. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about your Amazon internship experience and how that got converted to a full-time um, offer? 
Yeah, sure. So the internship experience, uh, once I got the offer, um, it was about, I think it was 12 weeks in length. And that's pretty typical for most uh, U.S. tech company internships. Um, and what they do is they give you a dedicated project specifically scoped out uh, for an intern. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it's some kind of need within the team that they don't have bandwidth for, or maybe some experimental idea that you know, they're not ready to fully commit devs to, but they can kind of try out a prototype with interns, mm -hmm. right? So the project's always picked out before you arrive. Um, and I was assigned a manager as well as a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I had weekly one-on-ones with both of these. So the manager is kind of there to make sure that you're on track for the return off. So mm -hmm. since the beginning, they'll kind of give you a good idea of what you need to do to get a return offer. And it's pretty much the same at all companies, you know, obviously finish the intern project, um, demonstrate that you have a good understanding of coding um, during the project, which if you finish the project should hopefully come hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and also demonstrate that you'd be a potentially good teammate uh, with the rest of the team, right? So stuff like, you know, are you sociable enough to talk with the team? Uh, are you not afraid to ask questions to the team? Because these are things that you will be doing as a full time. So they kind of want to see, you know, how you're approaching it as an intern. Mm -hmm. uh, the mentor one-on-ones were more focused on technical learning and self-improvement, stuff like, um, you know, what frameworks or languages I should pick up to help with the project. Mm -hmm. um, what can I do better in my code reviews to get less comments, right? Uh, and they'll just try to tell you, you know, what what they think you're lacking or what they think you're doing well to improve on. So it was a lot of great technical and career guidance, I would say, throughout the process. Mm -hmm. And so near the end of the internship, in like week 10 or 11, um, you should be expected to have your intern project pretty much wrapped up. And I personally had to give a demo in front of my org uh, about my project. This is probably team or org dependent, but I, it seems to be a thing within my org. So that was a little nerve wracking, but thankfully everything went pretty well. Okay, Jax, thanks so much for telling us about your experience on through the Amazon interview process and how you were able to overcome it and eventually get that Amazon internship to the full-time Amazon job. Um, so thank you guys for um, listening today and I hopefully you guys will use this information during your own recruiting during the fall 2020 season. I know it's COVID, but good luck out there, guys. Um, I know Amazon is currently uh, still recruiting. And so thank you so much for being on here, Jack. Thanks for having me on. Everybody follow at Toad Ray.